If you are a new photographer and you're confused about whether you should be using Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop to edit your photos, then this is the video for you. Today, we are gonna go over some of the basics of these two programs and chat about when you might use either one and ultimately which one is gonna be best for you in your photography business. Yes. But before we jump into that, we want to introduce ourselves. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And we're Hunter and Sarah Photography, a husband and wife professional wedding photography team. We're also educators, and our goal is to help photographers to build strong foundations in both their businesses and their personal lives so that they can run profitable and sustainable photography businesses. So before we jump into today's video, we wanna make sure that you know that we are sort of near the end of our 10 part series called 10 Free Marketing Hacks for Photographers. Now, this series is all about helping newer photographers who don't quite have money to spend on things like paid marketing or you know Facebook ads or anything like that, start to book paid jobs just by putting in some time and some effort into growing their business. Yeah, but we are pausing that series once again this week uh, because we just see so many new photographers ask this question all the time about what they should be using to edit their photos. So let's dive in. So we are going to start with Adobe Lightroom. Now this piece of software is really most powerful when your goal is to really view an entire gallery of images and then select the best, maybe narrow it down a little bit, and then lightly retouch a lot of photos at once, mostly paying attention to sort of the overall light and color in an image. Yeah, so as long as you are shooting in RAW. Which you should be, by the way. Anyways, yeah, make sure to check your camera for that. Uh, opening images in Adobe Lightroom gives you a ton of control over exposure, over the white balance, and tint, which make up like the overall color of an image, as well as individually adjusting shadows, highlights, and even individual colors. And Lightroom does have some more, I guess, powerful features you would call it beyond basic light and color, like a sort of rudimentary version of a spot removal tool, although Photoshop's version of it is way more powerful. Um, and you can also use what are called masking features where you sort of like manually paint in or maybe drag in from one side of the image additional light or color or brightness or whatever. Um, to just like certain parts of an image. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you could spend like an hour for the first time ever in Lightroom and get like a decent understanding of just the basic editing features by just like playing around with some sliders and buttons and just like seeing what they do to your images. Now, the thing that makes Lightroom really powerful and really so different from Photoshop is what's called batch editing. So what that means is basically once you edit one image, you can take that one image and apply the edits that you did to that image to any other number of images from that same session or any other session, which means that editing lots of images at once that were all taken in sort of the same lighting situation, like lots of images taken from one photo shoot, really quick and efficient. Yeah, and along that same line, if you like the way that you edited an image, you can save that edit, so how you edited that image as a preset and apply it to any photo that you take from any session. Or like you could buy pre-made presets online if there's an aesthetic that you're aiming for that you just really can't quite figure out on your own. And besides batch editing, which is definitely like sort of the most powerful part of Lightroom, Probably the next most helpful part is the fact that it is really good at organizing lots of images. So you can put, like I mentioned, entire galleries of photos, every photo you took on a portrait session or on a wedding day into Lightroom at once, and then use many of the sorting and culling features to really narrow down into uh, what is ultimately gonna be the photos that you will actually edit. So however you, you know, make those selections or which features you use and what criteria you use is completely up to you. But Lightroom makes it really easy to take a big volume of photos, narrow it down into what you want. And then like we said, batch edit all of those photos together. And if you are interested, since we're not gonna like get into the weeds right now, we did do an entire series earlier this year called Post Production Secrets, where we talked about our exact methods for how we back up, keyword, cull, blog, edit, and deliver our portrait and wedding gallery to our high-end clientele. Specifically, you may want to check out part three, which is all about culling or selecting images, uh, or part five, which is all about quickly and efficiently editing hundreds or even thousands of images in Lightroom. So by the way, one quick thing, we see this question sometimes, we just want to clarify, Lightroom Classic for desktop 
is what you want to be using if you're a professional photographer, or even if you just are aspiring to be a professional photographer one day. Um, and that's kind of in contrast to Lightroom CC, which is kind of like the, the dumbed down version or the light version of Lightroom Classic, and really isn't as good for professional use because of some of the missing features. Yeah. Lightroom CC is your only option if you're editing on your phone or on a tablet, which is why most professionals don't edit photos on their iPads or on their phones unless they're like on the road or they just need to edit like one or two images really quickly. Um, a fast laptop or even better like a desktop computer is going to give you the most control and allow Lightroom to run without like lagging or just slowing down your editing process. And for these reasons when we bring a new apprentice onto our team or when we start meeting with a new coaching student one of the first things we ask is like hey you're using Lightroom Classic right and if they're not we're like delete Lightroom CC off your computer, download Lightroom Classic, and basically don't ever use it again. Um, okay, so that is Lightroom. So what about Photoshop? Take everything that we just said about Lightroom and basically flip it on its head. Uh, if Lightroom is all about quickly and efficiently editing lots of photos in not a lot of time, Photoshop is about lovingly and painstakingly editing photos from scratch one by one. Now, Photoshop is especially helpful if you're gonna be doing any of the following things, right? So if you're gonna be replacing the sky in an image with a fake sky because you wanted like better clouds or this you know big bright sunset that you didn't actually capture on the day of. Um, if you're gonna be merging together multiple images, if you're gonna be maybe manually painting out blemishes or flyaway hairs uh, or even like a distracting object in the background of an image, um, or if you're gonna be doing sort of more heavy graphic design. So for example, the little header image that shows um, one of our pictures on all of our YouTube images when you like first click on it, we create those in Photoshop. Yeah, and while Lightroom's editing features can be figured out just by like messing around with sliders and some buttons, Photoshop is the kind of program that you could spend literal years using and just still not uncover half of its potential. It is by far the more powerful of the two programs as it can be used for everything from like photo editing to like 3D, like 3D graphic design. Um, the power and versatility of Photoshop is also why you can literally find YouTube videos where someone turns like a slice of pepperoni pizza into a model or, um, you know, Photoshop videos on YouTube where people take like a well-known celebrity and transform them into a completely different looking person. Um, it's also why Photoshop is now a verb, right? Like, oh, I'll just Photoshop you out, right? That kind of thing, um, which is both a blessing and a curse because uh, I don't know about you guys, but we have gotten plenty of requests from our clients to Photoshop something that is either completely ridiculous or completely impossible. And they just kind of expect like, oh, you're a photographer, you must know how to Photoshop and therefore it can, you know, do these impossible things. Yes. Yeah. Kind yeah. of a blessing and a curse, but. <laughs> But at the end of a day, Photoshop was made to individually edit one photo at a time and there isn't really a very efficient way to apply that edit of one image to another image. And there aren't really any real organizational features. And that's why Sarah said earlier in this segment that Photoshop is really more about a real in-depth dive into individual photos one by one, where Lightroom is more about lightly retouching huge galleries of images all at once. So now that we have given you kind of like a general overview of the two programs, the natural question is, is Lightroom or Photoshop going to be better for me and my photography business? And the answer to that question ultimately depends on what type of business you run or how you run your photography business. So let's use, you know, a one hour family session as an example. If at the end of that, you know, you go out, you shoot that session, you come home. If what you do next is to basically send unedited watermarked gallery to your clients where they get to scroll through the entire thing and basically choose their own favorites and say, okay, I'm gonna choose this five or these 10 images that we will either you know, pay for digital downloads or we're gonna you know, buy wall art or sort of however that process works. Um, if you're gonna only end up delivering you know, five or 10 images from an hour long session, then it might make sense for you to go into Photoshop and like we said, lovingly and painstakingly edit, you know, the flyaway hair, you know, first you'll do light and color, but then you're going to do the flyaways, then you're going to do the background, then you're going to add the sky, etc. cetera. Um, by the way, this business model is often called in-person sales or IPS, even if you're not actually doing, you know, the sales in person anymore, it sort of came from the film days, but um, that's what that business model is called. 
However, if you are gonna shoot, you know, that same one hour session and then call the entire gallery down to like 50 or 75 images and then like retouch them all and just send them all to your clients digitally, you are using what's called a shoot and share business model and you need to be using Lightroom. The fact that you can edit one photo and then apply that edit to a series of other photos makes it really the only, like the only option for batch editing. And so full confession, um, we learned this lesson the hard way as, as you probably noticed a theme in our videos. Um, one of the first paid sessions we ever did was a high school senior session for a friend of a friend back when uh, I think it was maybe like my first year uh, of undergrad. And um, so we went out, we did you know an hour or two and we, I think after we had you know taken a few hundred images, we narrowed it down to maybe like 70 ish final images. Then having never heard of Lightroom at the time, by the way, had never even heard of it, even though it had been around for several years at the time, uh, I one by one edited every single image in Photoshop from scratch. And so when the time came where we, you know, sat down with this senior and her mom and we showed them the final finished gallery, um, they purchased a few prints, a few pieces of wall art, whatever. And I think in the end we made like 150 bucks or something like that. And I remember so vividly still having this conversation with Sarah where I was like, okay, the emailing back and forth, the two hour photo shoot, the, the in-person meeting at the coffee shop that took an hour, the 10 hours it took me to edit these 70 photos in Photoshop. And I like did the math and was like, we basically just made minimum wage. Like, how is this even possible to run a profitable photography business with this business model? And of course, now we know it wouldn't have been to do it that way. You know, it's easy for us to identify our mistakes now, which <laughs> I mean, would basically be everything, all of it. Yeah, uh, the whole way we ran our business. But. The biggest source of our inefficiency was just trying to use Photoshop. Nowadays, we can call down like 200 images to like 50 or 75 of our favorites and then retouch them all in Lightroom in about like 30 or 45 minutes. At most. Um, and so at the end of the day, which program you use is gonna depend on how you run your business, right? Are you running IPS or are you running Shoot and Share? Now, if you don't know the answer to that question, if you're really new in your business and are still figuring that out, in just a few weeks, we're planning to post another video. Uh, maybe once we finish the series, maybe we'll interrupt again uh, and kind of, talk through those two methods and when they make sense and, and which one we think is better. Because um, honestly, we do think that between in-person sales and shoot and share, there is a better method for portrait and wedding photographers nowadays. Yeah, but until then, we're just gonna say this. Not long after that first senior session, we fully embraced a shoot and share business model and we've done that ever since. Now we deliver full online galleries to our wedding and uh, portrait clients and don't ask them to make any decisions when it comes down to narrowing like which edited images they'll receive. And so, yeah, you kind of probably already know our, what our answer is gonna be, but still watch the video because now you'll know why. But um, so, so what that means with our, you know, shoot and share business model is we might take 5,000 images on a wedding day and end up delivering anywhere from 700 to 1,200 edited, like retouched images. So Lightroom is quite literally the only program that we use. Yeah. But that is it for this week. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We really do hope that this video has helped clear up some of the Lightroom versus Photoshop confusion that's floating around out there. Yeah, and if you haven't already, we would really encourage you to join our Facebook community, Mastering the Wedding Photography Biz for Hunter and Sarah. In that group, we are building a community of, a free community of other photographers who are also building their photography businesses, helping each other out along the way. And if there are topics that you have questions about, plug that in there and maybe we'll make a video about it. Who knows? Yeah, it's a great point. Um, next week, we're going to be jumping back into our free marketing tactics series. Um, so just make sure you like and subscribe so that you know as soon as we post new content. Yep. If you found this video helpful, if you have any questions or if you'd like to add anything that you feel like we missed, but like not troll on your personal opinion, feel free to comment below. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. You like that? <laughs>